The transfer portal is back and things are about to get crazy. Now your first reaction might be, hey, our team's gonna go get some more talent, let's go. Or you might be in my shoes where you are losing your best player and it hurts all around. If you are unaware, there are two primary windows where you can hit the transfer portal from December 4th to January 3rd, where we saw players like Dylan Gabriel, Quinshawn Judkins, and Will Howard go and then now April 16th through April 30th. Today, I'm gonna talk about the best players in wave two of the transfer portal, what they bring to a possible team, and explore their options. Stick around to the end to see if an elite player is coming to your team. If you don't know who I am, I'm Saturday Shenanigans, and I post great college football content all off season. To keep you guys entertained, feel free to subscribe so you never miss out on another upload. The first player on my list is Dallin Hayden, running back from the Ohio State Buckeyes. He's hitting the portal. In 2022, his freshman year, he actually got a lot of time due to injuries. 111 carries, 553 yards, but he saw that dwindle in 2023. Only 19 carries on the year and we know why the reason he's transferring Ohio State in 2024 is going to have one of the best running back rooms in all of college football consisting of Quinshawn Judkins and Travion Henderson originally Hayden said that he was going to stay he was going to compete and find his way on the field but we all knew this was an absolute lie there was no way he was going to find significant time he is too talented to sit on the bench and play third string. I've mentioned this before about the new era of NIL transfer portal. There is not enough roster spots to stack a team. Hayden was a four star coming out of high school. He's a great talent. He's rated a three star in the portal, but he has to go somewhere else. And this is gonna somewhat even out the playing field. So here are his top three possible landing spots. These are according to good sources, college football analysts. First is the Colorado Buffaloes, and we could already see why this is an easy fit. The Buffs' run game was so bad, so atrocious in 2023. There were multiple games where they had under 100 yards rushing as a team. They already have Dylan Edwards. He is electric. If they pair Hayden and Edwards together, that could be much improved with a great offensive line that Coach Prime is trying to bring in. Next up is the Tennessee Volunteers. They're building their offense right now with top prospect quarterback Nico Liamaleva. But who is he going to hand off to? They already have Dylan Sampson, very great back, but they are just lacking depth. You need that one-two nowadays in college football. Tennessee is going to be much improved. They want to take that step in the SEC. Getting Hayden would help a lot. The third and final team for Dallin Hayden is the Memphis Tigers. Pretty random on the surface, but he actually is from Memphis. Players often go home. If the Tigers can bring out a big enough NIL package, they need to replace their running back. This would be a huge get for both parties. Next up is Dayon Hayes, an edge from Pittsburgh. He happened to lead the ACC in pressure rate. This guy is a dog. And when he was asked on why he hit the portal, he kept it completely blunt. He said he was not confident in Pitt's ability to win now, and he wanted to win now. This has to be tough for you Pitt Panthers fans to hear, but it is true. But the sad thing is, apparently Pittsburgh's NIL collective was saving up a bunch of money to keep him, but he still leaves anyway. What a cold world we live in. But you can also spin it the other way. His D-line coach left for the NFL, so maybe that had something to do with it. Not much in the media is known about where Hayes is transferring. Coming out of high school, he did have a lot of Big Ten offers from schools like Illinois, Michigan State, Ohio State, and Penn State. Specifically, he could bolster rosters like Ohio State and Penn State's with a lot of talent, add some more, or maybe Jonathan Smith at MSU needs to get going off the ground. Next, I'm going to talk about two players, both on the defensive side of the ball, on the same team, the Colorado Buffaloes. Both of them are leaving. Coach Prime is losing some talent. First, safety Miles Slusher and second DB Jaden Milliner Jones. Slusher is a veteran in college football. He played three years for the University of Arkansas, then transferred over to play with Coach Prime in 2023 with the Colorado Buffaloes. Last year, he had 17 tackles, and in his 2021 season, he had two interceptions. There's a lot of hype and rumors about him going to Oklahoma, but everyone thinks that he will be going back somewhere in the SEC. As far as Jaden Milliner Jones, he was a freshman in 2023 and due to the lack of depth with the Colorado secondary, he was able to play every single game last season. He had 24 total tackles and three pass deflections. He is from Texas, and the rumor is that he's going to go back home and play with SMU. Why would he play with SMU? They are going to be a Power 5 team next year. They have tons of money to spend on NIL, and they need him to add depth. 100% I could see Jaden transferring to SMU. He's a great young player. As far as Coach Prime and the Buffs, 
I think they'll be fine. I mentioned Tennessee earlier in the video as a team that could be adding players, but they also lost a big piece on the defensive side of the ball, linebacker Elijah Herring, who led the team in tackles. He is in the portal. Fans were really confused by this because he was one of the top players on their team and left anyways. But again, it's all about NIL, it's all about money, maybe he wasn't getting a big enough check and he could go somewhere else to get more. Some of the possible teams he could go to, first of all, Michigan. His old linebacker coach actually just switched over to the Wolverines and right after that got announced, he entered the portal. Could that mean something? Reportedly, Florida State's also in the mix, USC is as well as Colorado. Wherever he goes, he is a dynamic player who could help you win now. And to end this video, we are gonna talk about the craziest story of the college football spring transfer portal. It is running back Damian Martinez leaving the Oregon State Beavers. On the surface, this is a no-brainer why he'd leave. Oregon State is not playing in a conference next year. They have a Mountain West scheduling alliance. Dane could go somewhere else. He's one of the most underrated running backs in all of college football, and we know that. Yes, he was all-conference as a freshman and a sophomore with head coach Jonathan Smith. But the thing was, when half of Oregon State's team left in the winter transfer portal, Damian Martinez repeatedly said, Built, not bought. I'm not transferring. I am loyal to the Beavs. They believed in me. I am going to stay here. And he voiced this immensely. But then the spring portal comes around and he completely changes his mind. And there's a crazy story behind it. Martinez claims that Oregon State offered him a new house, a new car, and $400,000 to stay in Corvallis. And they did not live up to their promises according to him. Then the Oregon State NIL Collective came out and made a statement basically saying that he was a liar and they did do everything that they promised. Either way, I think he just wanted to get out because it is best for his career. So where is he gonna land? The first option is obvious. Michigan State head coach Jonathan Smith quarterback Aiden Childs, who was also on the Beavers, it will be comfortable. Second, Ole Miss, they are still looking for a number one running back with Quinshawn Judkins leaving, although they have Ulysses Bentley, very talented, Dane could come in there and be the number one. Lane Kiffin is the self-proclaimed portal king as well. They have a lot of money to spend. I could very well see him going to Oxford. The Tennessee Volunteers, I mentioned earlier how they're looking to add to their running back room. Dame would be a great fit. Finally, the Alabama Crimson Tide with head coach Kalen DeBoer, a new era. However, I don't know how this is going to work because I watched Jam Miller play in the spring game. That dude is amazing. That would be a crazy one-two combo and a great running back room for the Tide, but I don't know if Dame would go there. And that is the video. If you guys want to see more of these, make sure to go crazy with the engagement, like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. I've been Saturday Shenanigans, your home for unfiltered college football content, and I'll see you guys soon.